Hello everyone, welcome to Learn India Pro. This is me, Sonia. I hope you all are fine. And today we'll be starting with the second chapter of class 12th, that is sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Okay, now in the previous chapter, what we have seen is that the reproduction, it is the mechanism, it is a process wherein an individual give rise to the young one of similar kind. And reproduction can be of two types, that is the sexual reproduction and the asexual reproduction. So this video is basically based on the introduction of the chapter, wherein we'll be doing that what the chapter title denotes, okay, what it wants to say. So the chapter title is sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So we'll be seeing the sexual reproduction how the flowering plants, flowering plants means angiosperms, how angiosperms, they reproduce sexually. So in case of angiosperms, they produce flowers. So they have floral parts. Flower is the reproductive part and flower is formed of many other parts. For example, if we see the diagram of a flower, a basic diagram of a flower flower has petals it has a lower lobe on which the flower complete parts are attached here there are green color petals then there is the stalk and then there is a male reproductive part and the female reproductive part so this is the structure of flower so flower it is composed of colorful parts or the petals the green color leafy part that is sepals the female reproductive part that is carpel and the male reproductive part that is stamens right now the complete set if you have seen in morphology of flowering plants, the complete set of petals is called as corolla. The complete set of sepals is called as calyx. The complete set of carpel represents the female reproductive part that is the gynoecium. And the complete set of stamens that represents the male reproductive part that is androsium okay so androsium represents the male reproductive part so the flower has petals it has sepals it has carpal it has stamens petals the complete set is called as or the complete bowl is called as corolla sepals is calyx stamens is androsium and carpals is gynosium now out of these parts these four parts Petals and sepals, they are not directly involved in reproduction, but they just help in reproduction. Okay, so they do not directly involve in reproduction. They have a supportive role. They support the sexual reproduction. Thus, they are called as non-essential organs or accessory organs. So these parts are called as accessory organs or the non-essential organs. Now talking about are carpal and stamens, androsium and gynosium. So if I talk about carpal and stamens, so carpal denotes the female reproductive part, stamen denotes the male reproductive part and these are the organs where the gametes will be formed so these are called as essential floral organs so these are essential floral organs and all these parts are attached to a swollen base that is called as thalamus okay so these are the parts of the flower the next thing is how we'll be dealing with this chapter so this chapter is a bit lengthy and there are several events which has been described in this chapter. So all the events, how we'll be discussing them, we'll be discussing them based on our chapter 1. 
Now, chapter one, what we have done that sexual reproduction involves several events. Okay, there are several events which are the part of sexual reproduction. Now, the first event is pre-fertilization events. Pre-fertilization events means, what do you mean by fertilization? Fertilization means fusion of gametes, right? So, pre means before the fusion of gametes. So, there are certain events which are taking place before the fusion of gametes. What are the events? There shall be two events. First, the gamete formation to, should take place. So, the first event is gamete formation. Now, gamete formation is called as gametogenesis. It is called as gametogenesis. Genesis means formation. Gameto means gamete. So, it is a formation of gametes. Okay. The second step involves gamete transfer. Right. Now, here what happens? The male and the female gametes are immotile. So, the male gamete should be transferred to the female gamete. So, this process in case of flowering plants, in case of flowering plants, it is mediated by or the phenomenon is called as pollination. Okay. Next is, the second event is fertilization. So, once the gametes has been formed, they have been transferred, the second event will be fertilization where fusion of gametes will be taking place. Which gametes? The male and the female gamete. Okay. Now, the third event will be after fertilization. So, you can call it as after means post. So, you can call them as post-fertilization events. So, the last event includes post-fertilization events. Now, see, in pre-fertilization events, gamete formation has been done. Okay, gamete transfer has been done. In fertilization, fusion has been done. Now, after fusion, what is formed? Zygote is formed. Now, that zygote should develop, right? Now, in, now we are specifically talking about the flowering plants. The zygote has been should be developed the zygote it develops into embryo so embryo development should take place right or embryo geni should take place correct so this is embryo geni next is see for zygote to develop into embryo or for embryo development you need food okay food nourishment is must so, nourishment from where it occurs, it occurs from endosperm. So, what should occur? Endosperm development should occur. Right. Next, once endosperm has been developed, zygote is developed into embryo. What will happen? The ovule will develop into seed. So, seed development should occur. And the ovary will develop into fruit. So, fruit should be formed. This is the characteristic feature of angiosperms that they bear fruits. They do not have naked seeds. They have covered seed. And the seed is covered with the fruit. So, these are the major steps which are the major part of sexual reproduction. Major events that is pre-fertilization events which, is in, which involves gamete formation, gamete transfer. Gamete formation is called as gametogenesis. Gamete transfer is called as pollination then fertilization and then post-fertilization events. Then there are, apart from these, there are several other methods which are the part of this chapter. That is, the first method is parthenocarpy. That is your seedless fruit. Then another topic is epomixis. And the last topic is polyembryony, which we'll be do doing in detail apart from these all topics okay so this chapter is majorly we'll be doing it we'll be proceeding it like this so first we'll be discussing the pre-fertilization events that is gamete transfer a gamete formation sorry now gamete formation if you see there are two gametes male and female so we'll be talking first about male then about female then we'll be talking about how for gamete transfer is taking place then fertilization and then we'll be seeing all post-fertilization events and at the last we'll be discussing what is parthenocarpy 
what is parthenon carpi and then we'll be discussing apomixis and polyembryon so these will be the strategy for this chapter stay tuned with the learn india pro we'll see we'll proceed about male reproductive part in the next video